One Health, One Medicine. That's the concept at the University of Missouri, where every department from engineering to the individual medical schools work towards one goal collaboratively. The veterinary school at the University of Missouri in Columbia is not only an active teaching college, it's also on the vanguard of translational medicine. Now, as producer Pam James will show you, Mizzou's veterinary school, especially its comparative orthopedic lab, is making medical discoveries that will someday soon translate to humans. The most recent stuff that we're working on, I think really two big areas. One are biomarkers. So with one drop of your joint fluid, we can predict what's going to happen in your joint in terms of arthritis and even the severity of that to some degree. Um, and then the other thing is the biological regenerative medicine. And what we like to really think about right now is rather than repair, we like to think about regeneration and biological tissues. So rather than metal and plastic, if we can put young, vibrant cartilage in your joint and let you do everything you want to do, not restrict you after recovery, that's really our goal. The University of Missouri has two strategies using regenerated cartilage. The first involves a patented process of preserving donor tissue from dogs, horses, and humans. The other one then is where we grow it, literally grow it in the lab, and so we take cells, chondrocytes, the cartilage cells that normally make that tissue, and then we mold that to your specific joint, if you're the patient, and we do that with a CT scan or MRI, and then we grow it in the lab. It takes us about three weeks to get it to be functional, real live cartilage. And then just the same way we would put metal and plastic in your joint, we do that with the biological joint. The One Health, One Medicine concept means that the lab's work on animals can be translated to humans. Now what you might not have known is that four-leggers, animals, are anatomically and biomechanically similar to two-leggers, humans. So we share the same issues of the joint, like arthritis and torn ligaments. They really are the same, the joint, so canine joints especially mimic the human joint exactly. So I do, you know, 300 ACL surgeries a year here. I do total hips, total elbows, arthroscopy of all types. And it's really, I say, once you get them under the drape and you get it on the arthroscopy monitor, it looks exactly the same. In fact, in a lot of my talks to MDs and or veterinarians, I'll put an arthroscopy picture up and I'll say, is this canine or human? And once it's at that point, they're only 50-50, so as good as a coin flip. KCPT visited with two of Dr. Cook's patients who have both benefited from his orthopedic expertise. Lincoln, a Malamute skilled in search and rescue operations, and Blitz, an athletic border collie who trains aggressively for agility competitions. Blitz's passion is running agility. Uh, he actually loves to do that pretty much more than anything other than catching a frisbee. We were playing some kind of fetch out in the backyard and I believe that that is probably where he injured it. He came up uh, lame on his right leg. Dr. Cook brought in the x-rays and showed them to me and it was just so horrific to me that I could have been running my dog and he was so so injured. To me it was just like, oh, well, we're just done. That's, you know, it's, it's all over. And Dr. Cook's like, I think I can fix that. I think we can get him back 100%. Again, Lincoln's nose is in the air. He's turned away from his handler. That's a good sign that he thinks he has some scent. Lincoln is a canine search and rescue animal, so he is trained to find missing people. Uh, he is an air scent search and rescue dog, so he's a very valuable animal in addition to being, of course, our loved pet. Lincoln had arthritis uh, in actually both of his front elbows, uh, and we had actually worked with a couple of specialists at a vet clinic in Wichita. Uh, we're eventually told by a specialist back there that Dr. Cook was the man to see for dog elbows. So we brought him up here, and uh, Dr. Cook did what's called the Q procedure on him. Um, both Blitz and Lincoln really do play into this whole thing. We developed the minimally invasive um, rotator cuff repair that we did in Blitz, working on a human project. The canine unicompartmental elbow arthroplasty that we did in Lincoln, again, was for human actually knee technology. But because we developed them in dogs, then we could help real life patients like Blitz and Lincoln, which is awesome to me. I mean, I always say I'm a veterinarian first. And if you made me choose, hopefully no one ever will, but if you made me choose, you know, that's what I would do. I would treat dogs. 
Blitz and Lincoln have since recovered from their surgeries, and both sets of animal and parent are very happy with the results. There are three different levels in most of the different venues that you do agility with. You have a novice level, you move to an open level, and then an excellent level. And he's competing at the excellent level in both venues that we compete in. And it's just really the teamwork's coming back together. So I'm, I'm very excited. We got a couple of first places. Lincoln's um, dramatically better than he was uh, before the Q procedure uh, six months ago. It's probably taken eight or nine years, you know, I mean, he looked like a senior citizen and now he looks like a six-year-old dog instead. While neither Blitz nor Lincoln's surgeries involved regenerated cartilage, Dr. Cook has been successful in using it in other animal patients and looks favorably to the future. Again, we've had dogs with that out over five years now, doing fantastic. And so we hope to have that one in real clinical use um, very soon here, and then widespread as soon as that study is done. The biological joint replacement where we grow the tissues is probably about another seven year process, and that's for full FDA approval. Again, we have done that in dogs, and we have been successful with that, so I think it is proven. But of course, all the, the hurdles that are necessary for safety and for really the widespread human use still have to be completed. Beyond his love for animals, especially dogs, Dr. Cook has a very personal reason to end joint issues for everyone. My grandfather was actually one of the first people to ever have metal and plastic knee replacements. It was great. I mean, you know, he, he certainly would have been much more debilitated more quickly, but they weren't perfect. Um, so I grew up riding bikes with him as part of his rehab. And I did that after surgery one and surgery two, but I also did it after surgery seven and surgery eight and skin grafts and infections and, you know, wheelchair later in life. So since I was little, I'm like, it's great, but we can do better than that. And at that time, I wanted to do better for people like my grandpa, and hopefully this is it.